Knox Automobile is a company that most have not forgotten about because they've probably never even heard of it. An early pioneer in the American automobile industry, they had a short history of just 24 years and a few notable models, but one innovation in particular cemented their place in automotive history, and we can still see its effects in society today. Welcome back to All Cars, y'all. I am John, and this is a far too brief history of Knox. Harry Austin Knox was born January 19, 1875, near Westfield, Massachusetts, and eventually enrolled in the Springfield Technical Institute, doing his practical work for his degree at the neighboring Electron Company that made electric motors and elevators. Knox graduated in 1894 and partnered with Overman Wheel Company. Overman was a successful and high-quality builder of bikes and already built a three-wheeled Victor bicycle, and they agreed to let Knox install an engine of Knox's own design into three of them. However, by 1896, the bicycle manufacturer was facing massive financial losses and was nearly forced into bankruptcy in 1897. They had a massive fire in 1899, and the company was sold in 1900. In 1901, Overman formed the Overman Automobile Company and produced the Victor Steam Carriage before merging with Locomobile Company in 1904, but that's a story for another day. Knox, seeing Overman's struggles, reunited with his former boss, Mr. Cutler of Electron Company, to form his own auto company, Knox Automobile, in Springfield, Massachusetts in 1900. They purchased a factory from Waltham Watch Company and built 15 cars in their first year. These first cars, known as their Model A, was a three-wheeled runabout with a five-horsepower, one-cylinder, air-cooled engine. And it was that engine that Knox became famous for. Instead of using fins or flanges to dissipate heat, 1,750 3 16 inch rods were screwed into the casing, giving the engine the appearance of a hedgehog, and it ended up earning the nickname Old Porcupine. The one cylinder was used until 1905, but in 1902, a more powerful 8 horsepower two cylinder version was added and used until 1907. These early cars were originally called Knoxmobiles, but in 1903 they were called the Waterless Knox, as well as, quote, the car that never drinks, a strong selling point in those early automobile days. Those first cars sold for $750, or about $26,000 in today's money, and between 1900 and 1904 they offered the B, the C, and two-cylinder models, adding four-wheel designs in 1902 and with sales rising from 15 to 100, then 250, 500, and by 1904, 553. In 1901, Knox had begun experimenting in the commercial vehicle market, as well as racing, including winning the New York, Boston, and New York race in 1902. In 1903, Knox was offering trucks, but sticking with air-cooled engines when the market was already shifting to more water-cooled models, and was also busy manufacturing tractors as well. Disagreements between Knox and his financial backers about the direction of the company led him to leaving the company and starting a new business in 1905. It was around this time that Knox Automobile made what was possibly its most significant contribution to society. It introduced what is considered to be the first modern fire engine, and we can still see its effects today. So our story splits here with Knox Automobile continuing ahead with climbing sales, including a Model G with a 40 horsepower air-cooled four-cylinder, also offering it with a limousine body for $5,000. And by 1908, Knox was competing in the mid and high price markets while also moving the engine from under the body to the front and shifting from a chain to a shaft drive. Also in 1908, they offered a water-cooled four-cylinder engine as a $100 option on their cars. In 1910, a six-cylinder was offered and the air-cooled engines were dropped. After 1910, Knox abandoned the mid-price market as well. Sales peaked in 1910 with 1,412 sales and it began to quickly drop off. By 1912, they were facing bankruptcy and by 1914, 
Only 383 vehicles were sold and the company went belly up, having produced a total of 10,835 cars. But that wasn't the end of their story, as the company reorganized as Knox Motors and continued until 1924, building tractors and trucks. Of special note were two models. First was about a 1911 when the Knox Martin tractor was introduced, along with the term tractor trailer, and the concept of the rocking fifth wheel still used today. Second was in 1915, the Model 35 with dual rear wheels, a 7-liter engine and capable of moving artillery and tanks, which caught the attention of the French in World War I as well as the U.S. military. Now, Harry Knox, after leaving his company, established Knox Motor Truck Company in 1905, also in Springfield, with the intention of focusing on commercial vehicles while also offering cars. Almost immediately, his previous company sued, and by 1907, he was forced to give up the use of his own name, and the company became Atlas Motor Car Company. Harry expressed an interest in licensing a car from Sunset Automobile Company of San Francisco, and while they originally refused, they were later devastated in 1906 by an earthquake and agreed. Atlas could now build the Atlas car based on a two-cylinder, two-stroke, 22-horsepower engine, and the same engine was used in delivery vans and taxi cabs. In 1908, Harry developed a three-cylinder with 34 horsepower and later a four-cylinder making 60 horsepower. In 1909, they became the first two-stroke car to enter a long-distance race with the Vanderbilt Cup. As two strokes fell out of favor, they added a Knight sleeve-valved engine in 1912, and the cars were known as Atlas Knights, at a cost of about $3,500 or about $106,000 in today's money. By 1913, the company was bankrupt, and Harry moved to Indianapolis to work with the Lions Brothers on the Lions Knight car. This car, still using the Knight engine, was offered with a 50-horsepower four-cylinder in multiple bodies and costing $2,900 up to $4,300. In 1914, they offered the K6 with a six-cylinder engine. Harry left the company in 1915, and production of the autos shut down, although the company continued to build engines. But once again, the story does not end there. Harry Knox went on to work for the Ordnance Department, at first working on Army trucks and specifically all-wheel drive versions, and later on half-track trucks. By 1924, he was working on tank design, and by 1926 was developing his prototype T1 tanks and its later versions modifying engines including a V12 from American La France of fire truck fame, relocating the turret and modifying armament. All were prototypes and never entered production. By 1933, Harry was working on a new tank suspension to address the miserable ride of earlier tanks, largely based on previous British designs. They created the Vertical Volute Spring Suspension, VVSS, which was more compact, with larger travel and better ride. The suspension was so successful, it largely underpinned all American tanks into the beginning of World War II. He even designed its replacement in the HV. SS suspension around 1944 while testing and experimentation on torsion bar suspensions inspired by German tanks continued. After the war, Knox continued to work for the Ordnance Department working on running gear components like tracks and retired in the late 40s. He ultimately passed away on June 2nd, 1957 at the age of 83. While largely forgotten, Knox, the person, and his companies are an outsized influence. From innovative air-cooled engines to fire trucks to work developing the designs and technology for the U.S. military, his influence can be seen and heard to this day. But few know his name, and fewer still know of the cars he built. While autos like the Model T went on to be household names, Knox worked largely behind the scenes without fanfare, innovating cars, trucks, and tanks into the future. Thanks for being here, and appreciate you showing the channel some love. Special thanks to my Patreons for their support, and if you support histories and news pinions, please consider supporting this channel.